I would like to welcome today Dr. Tihomir Rodorčić from Slovenia. We already had an opportunity to listen to him, but the time has come for us to together bring an update because the situation with the COVID is rapidly changing from one day to another. Just to remind you, friends, that Dr. Tihomir Rodorčić is a family medical doctor from Kočevi in Slovenia, where he and his wife Lydia are running their own clinic. He's also active in the local municipality COVID clinic and emergency unit. He's also involved in public and radio health education through lecturing and workshops and seminars and counseling across Slovenia and Croatia. So we welcome you, Dr. Odorčić. And um, I have a couple, maybe two or three questions for you today. And the first one would be related to the current situation with COVID in the world, but especially in Europe. Uh, here in the USA, where I'm located, it seems the situation is getting a little bit better, at least in some parts of the USA. But um, when we talk about Europe, then we see that things are almost like running out of control. Only yesterday, I read that in Croatia, which is a country of 4 million people only, the Croatia has crossed the line of 10,000 people who died uh, from COVID. Could you give us an overview of how serious the situation is in Europe at this time, and especially in the eastern parts of Europe? And what is the relationship with the number of people who have been vaccinated and non-vaccinated as they are related directly to what is happening right now in Europe? Yes, you're right especially Balkans, Balkan countries, Austria also, and also Belgium, the other part of Europe and the Netherlands are facing surge in new cases of COVID-19 in the last weeks. If we start our visual presentation of seven day average on a global basis, starting uh, at the end of last summer, we can see that the picture of for Eastern Europe is getting worse from day to day. So we have now here the map of Europe today on 17th of November. We can move with time back to the beginning of fall or the end of summer, September 1. We can see that all these Eastern European countries seem to be doing well. If we start uh, an animation to date, we will see the change of the picture. You see how the colors are changing to red and especially on Balkans and mid Europe, the countries are having many, many cases of COVID per week. The other part of the question is about the comparison of vaccination and its effect on the number of deaths. This graphic has two parameters. The first one is vaccinations, vaccine doses per 100 and new deaths per 1 million, also seen on the weekly basis. The map is showing as the situation from the very beginning of the pandemic, as you can see here, January 29th, and is getting on to these days now. So we move on to the day when the vaccinations have begun. Here are some countries which we will compare. These are our countries in our neighborhood. We can see now when we look at Europe that Europe has got to 120 doses per 100 in these days now. And the death rates per 1 million for Europe has got to approximately five. Five deaths weekly per 1 million people. If we now see a country which hasn't done so good with vaccination, it is Bulgaria, which stayed very low under Europe average. And Bulgaria has a very high decrease in numbers of deaths per million 
about 25 per million. Now we can compare some other countries, for example, Romania, which also didn't do it so well. But we can also see Serbia in their neighborhood, which had good vaccination rates, about 100 doses per 100, which means about 50% of whole population vaccinated. And they had much lower death cases. But if we compare Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria with the best vaccinated country in Europe, it is Portugal, you can see the big, big difference. Portugal has vaccinated about 80% of whole population or 160, 160 vaccine doses per 100 and has a very, very low rate of deaths per million. You can see it here down. Other Slavic Balkan countries are Croatia, for example. They're not doing such well like Portugal. <laughs> and Bosnia and Herzegovina, very low vaccination rate and also high death rates. North Macedonia, maybe nearly as bad as Croatia. And now we have Slovenia. And Slovenia has 54% of uh, population vaccinated. Slovenia has a relatively, relatively low uh, death rate per million. Slovenia has nowadays the worst picture of cases in seven, in seven days. 1,574 cases in one week. We are approaching a very gray scenario in our hospitals because hospitals are full and we are also making negotiation with neighboring countries about accepting our sick people uh, who need to be hospitalized, for example, in Italy. Uh, some days ago, we thought it could be also good in Austria, but Austria is also getting very close behind us. This is Croatia. Yeah, we can only expect that relatively higher rates of vaccinated people in these countries in Western Balkans can save us from high debt rates. Dr. Odorich, I would like I would like now to that we come to a conclusion of those pictures that you have shown to us. Am I right if I'm concluding that basically there is a direct relationship between the number of people who are vaccinated and also on the other end, the number of people who are dying in a case they have not been vaccinated. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, I will show once again this picture here. It shows us if we compare, if we compare countries with high numbers of COVID deaths per 1 million of their population with vaccine doses per 100, we will see an inversely proportional picture. You can see it on the case of Portugal. Dr. Rodriguez, I have another question for you because I'm hearing and probably you yourself hear the same question being repeated again and again and again. And this basically question goes like this. But also the people who are vaccinated are getting sick and are spreading, spreading the virus. Some are even blaming vaccines for many deaths. How would you illustrate the benefits of vaccination regardless of who gets infected? Yeah, you're right. Vaccinated people can also spread the virus. Vaccinated people can also get sick, but uh, they are not so prone to it like those who are not vaccinated. And if this answer of mine isn't enough, I can show you again an animation which I have made uh, to show this in picture. We can see the situation in which we have the so-called zero patient, this red dot here. And this situation, we can imagine that it is an ideal one situation for a picture. For a, So no one is protected, uh, it means no masks, no distance, no hand washing, no vaccinations. The Delta variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus 
has a reproductive number between five and eight. And that means that one infected person can infect five to eight other people. To make it easier to imagine, I assume that the number of R0 R is actually six, so that we can express it and see how it multiplies itself. So we see the first person, this red dot, the first person can infect, indeed infect six other persons. These six infect other 36. These 36 infect the next 216. And those 216 people infect the other 1296 people and so on and so forth each time times six. So it is in a population which is not protected. There, there are no masks where the people uh, don't know of any, any measure of protecting themselves and the others. And now a different situation. A situation in which we have 100% vaccinated people, which is actually an unattainable idea. But let's imagine the situation the following data, data is not ideal, but the fact, fact that I follow the number of infected in recent weeks in my, in my town, and that is that approximately one third of those infected are vaccinated. So I will make an illustration. So like I said, only the one third of them got infected two-thirds of them are still healthy. And those two which are infected will infect, each one of them will infect only two people, uh, like we said, because all of them are vaccinated. And so on, it goes to the other group where uh, there are eight infected, and at least we have only 16 infected. It can go on and on. And so we can see that in this ideal situation, like I said, of course, both slides, the first one with all of them infected and the other one uh, where are only in the end 16 infected represent some impossible conditions. In the first case, there is absolutely no protection. And in the second case, we start from the fact that everyone was vaccinated. Since we live in the real world and in most populations, we have only a good half of those vaccinated and we still all stick to preventive epidemiological measures as much as we can, then these numbers and the overall picture are a little different. However, it is good to know the principle on which the epidemiological measure of vaccina vaccination is based. We understand, Dr. Odorchich, that you have presented, a, let's call it an ideal picture which does not exist, but it is nevertheless powerful enough basically to tell us that uh, the number of people that are going to be or who are going to be infected by the people who have not been protected, who are not vaccinated, and so on, comparing with the number of people who will be infected through the people who have taken the measures including vaccination, when you take those two numbers and when you see the way they multiply and go further and further and further away, we are coming to really huge, huge difference in numbers of the people affected or infected in one or the other case. Yes, really. Uh, when I last time showed this animation on a Croatian uh, presentation, there was one person who said to me, yeah, but it's not an ideal situation. And I know, I knew that person who is against vaccination. And I said to him, maybe because of you, <laughs> because you are, <laughs> you are against. So we know very well why we don't have an ideal situation. Yeah, we do not have an ideal situation because uh... There is a significant number of people who are simply resisting any notion of a need to be vaccinated. Yeah. One more question for you, Dr. Rodercic. Uh, many people who are opposing vaccination argue that leading a healthy lifestyle 
some kind of alternative lifestyle would just as efficiently, if even more efficiently, heal or protect Savram from COVID and even from the worst outcomes than actually being vaccinated. While I do firmly believe in the value of some alternative lifestyles, living healthily, feeding, uh, having a healthy lifestyle, exercise, uh, taking care of one eats, uh, vitamins and so on and on and on. Is this sufficient at this time when we are facing this kind of crisis to be really saying this is enough to save us, to protect us even from the worst outcomes when it comes to these pandemics? Or should we still follow the way of vaccination? Okay, I, I can affirmatively say that a healthy lifestyle is always good and welcome, like you said it. It can improve your natural immune system. Natural or innate immunity plays the most important role in managing your first encounter with an infectious agent. This encounter can in dependence on the amount of the agent and its virulence and in a strong and sometimes destroying response of your body, which is known to us as infectious disease. Such can be COVID-19 after getting infected with the novel coronavirus. Because of natural immune response, there is a whole bunch of reactions in play because of activation of mediating cells there is histamine and cytokine accumulating in tissues with result in high body temperature and destroying of some tissues like pulmonary cells and so on. It results in severe respiratory disorders like acute respiratory distress syndrome. If this is the case, then you have to be put on artificial ventilation devices, of course, if they are available. But all this mayhem can be prevented if someone gets the acquired or adaptive immunity. And how can we get this acquired immunity? Specific antibodies and killer cells react prior to any of above reactions and destroy the virus particles before they even get to multiply themselves. And how can you get this acquired immunity? How can you get your antibodies and killer cells? There are only two ways to get it. Either by getting sick from the virus or by being vaccinated with specific vaccines, which previously stimulated the immune system to produce specific antibodies and T cells. The first possibility is, as you have seen, a very hazardous one. You can be very sick for days and weeks, and in the end, you don't know if you'll survive. Therefore, the best and the least hazardous way to get your specific immunity is the vaccine. When I speak about the difference between that innate and adaptive immunity, that uh, acquired immunity, specific immunity. I like to compare them with a real war. When a country has a quarrel with another country, it gets in a war. And everybody knows a war uh, will ever have its cost. A war does cost economically, financially, in human capacities, there will be collateral damage. There will be a disaster after a war. Nevertheless, who wins the war? You can win the war, but in the end, you will have a big, big cost. But you can also avoid this war. And how can you avoid a war in a real war situation? You can send spies, special agents who can neutralize the other country, not even not to start a war. We call these wars special wars, hybrid wars today, but let us forget those wars. 
let us go back to our immunity. If we live only healthy, as you said, eat only healthy food, we can get a strong natural immune system. But with this natural immune system, we will be sick. We can survive also, but it will damage our body, body in the end. We will have some consequences of it. We also will have in the end the antibodies and next time we won't be get sick, but we can get it. We can uh, be vaccinated and produce our antibodies and T cells, which can stimulate those killer cells in our body, which can neutralize the virus before it starts to multiply itself. So the conclusion is that Although it is important that we live a healthy lifestyle as much as we know, to know at the same time that in the special circumstances and this COVID situation when it comes to health situation is a war situation. So under those special circumstances, just applying the alternative methods and ways will not be sufficient, certainly not on a large scale. Uh, I know for myself that uh, some people who know me and remember me two, three, four years ago, I was, I was really overweight. I was not really taking care of myself. I changed my lifestyle, thanks God. Uh, I've lost a number of kilograms or pounds. I try to exercise on a regular basis. I've also changed the way I live and what I eat and how much and so on. But at the same time, I know very well, very well, that with all of those blessings, uh, this might not be enough to get me through these circumstances and situation that we have now. I'm thankful to God for the changes I have taken, undertaken in my life, but I have also been vaccinated three times up to now. So, so I believe one and the other are working together towards a good result. And if you live a healthy lifestyle, you will also produce more antibodies after vaccination. Indeed. Thank you again, Dr. Dodotic, for this presentation and update that you have given us this time. I hope that uh, it will be helpful to some people for sure. And I'm looking forward that we do something like this again very soon, because unfortunately, this situation is changing so rapidly that we probably will need more yeah. updates. Yeah. Thank you.